All right, I'm Derek Kimball with the Ham Good Barbecue. Today we are going to do a competition pork butt. So a few things to know is the old KCBS rules were you needed a four pound, at least a, a minimum four pound pork butt, which the rules have changed. And, um, you know, there is no minimum. So a lot of people are actually just focusing on this money muscle. I've got an eight pound pork butt here. And this normally isn't something I would cook in a competition because I want something with a bigger fat cat. But uh, today we're just going to run through um, a recipe and cook process and see how well it turns out. Main area I want to focus on is obviously this money muscle, which is what we all focus on, want to put in there. And then the second part I would normally focus on is this meat under here under the fat cap. So, because that becomes, uh, you know, a little bit more succulent. And I tend not to put a lot of pieces in a box. Because, again, if you give the judge, you know, if you have just the money muscle in there, they have to judge, judge you on that. But the more meat you put in there, the more they try. And you give them more of a, a chance to score you down if that meat doesn't turn out to uh, their specificity. So we're going to do just a basic trim here. Um, I've considered removing the bone, trimming this down to around four pounds, but today we're, I just want to, I just want to run through the process, see how well it turns out, and then make my adjustments there. All right, so we're going to remove any loose fat. any loose meat also want to focus on I don't want to get too far into that money muscle I do want some of that meat surrounding that to protect it. We tend to have an artery that runs right through there. So my main focus is just going to be on that money muscle, but we'll see how this meat turns out under here. I normally wouldn't season this part of the pork butt. Some of these come out so good you, you really don't do much of a trim at all. I mean, again, I'm not worried about this part. So again, you have... You have... Uh, three parts you got you got the horn and then you got the tubes and the money muscle I don't want to do a lot right there but I do what I want to do is make a mark so if I were to carve this out I'd come back about right in here at least for me We're going to cook this on um, the Weber. I'm going to cook with B&B &B charcoal. I've got a chunk of apple wood in there. I'm not going to cook with a water pan this time because I do I do want to go fairly hot fast. I've considered using my pit barrel, but I'm actually going to try this out on my Weber, um, smoke him out, and then doing it more of a hot and fast process on that. That way, if I decide to cook with two, yeah, I can comfortably put two on there or cook one on the second grate. I'm not going to worry about that right there. Again, I just want to focus on getting some injection and flavor there and on the back side. So, I tend to steer clear of anything that's spicy. This is Tony Sriracha's 
um, injectable butter. It's butter jalapeno. It's really not that spicy. I did a half a cup with a cup of apple juice and a tablespoon of my hickory rub. I'm going to inject the rest of this, but just to get some flavor in there. Again, I'm not going to turn any meat in, in there. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and inject parts of it. This makes good pulled pork because you can take it out in chunks. Normally, if I was doing this, I would take off some of this right here, but I'm not worried about that today. And then this middle part makes good chopped pork. A lot of people do turn in the tubes. I'm hoping to have this cooked. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the same rules. We're going to we're going to smoke this until the rub is set, until I have a good collar. And hopefully, my goal is to have this actually panned, you know, wrapped and, and basically pulled and resting in in about four hours. This turns out well then I may consider actually doing another run with it but without the bone trimming it just a little bit smaller and and weighing it in case anybody's wondering it's just a basic pork butt from uh, Sam's Club so this is sweet heat mesquite it's not that hot I'm not going to go real heavy on it. This is hickory rub. Again, I normally wouldn't season this fat cap side, but since it doesn't have much of a fat cap. I would normally inject this at a competition probably around for me like 9 or even 10 at night let it rest in the evening depending on what time I'm going to throw it on in the morning and that way it's had time to really soak up a lot of that rub or a, a, a lot of that injection And then I'd rub it and let it set for about 45 minutes. All right, so we've got apple, wood, b, &B charcoal. I'm not going to use a water pan. Let's see what this is sitting at. Good. Okay, it's about 300 degrees. It's two, but 275. I got one bit open all the way. Another one quarter of the way and I just opened that one um, all the way. I think I'm just going to go ahead and drop this and let it cook. 
And then I'll check in an hour when that rub is set. I'm going to put it in a pan with some butter, brown sugar, a little bit of apple juice. I'm going to cook in a pan. We'll finish it. We'll temp and monitor this money muscle because right now that's just all I'm kind of focusing on is zeroing in on, on getting that done. Because if it comes down to it, that the only meat I really want to see turned in there for the judge is at least that. I will consider turning in the meat under that fat cap if it comes out good. Other than that, that's all I want to focus on. That's why I'm not too concerned with the trimming process on this, but depending on how this recipe turns out, um, cooking process, I may zero in and make some adjustments on my next little trial run here before uh, my first competition. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this. It's getting close to 300 degrees. Um, so we'll probably check back in about an hour. All right, so uh, we're 45 minutes into this. Just gonna adjust this camera a little bit. I'll try to bring the camera in a little bit closer. So the temperature's running. Um, you know, I don't pay attention to this. Um, I've got two oven thermometers on there. Uh, we're 45 minutes into this. And I did lift it off just a minute ago and check. We're, we're running just a little bit above 300. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, hot and fast. Some people run a lot hotter than that. Um, so we're going to lift it off. It's going to get a little smoky here. And all I'm looking for is, you know, this rub is starting to set. So we're getting really, really close. I think we're about 15 minutes away from actually pulling that. Um, I mean, I could spritz it. But sometimes I feel like that delays the setting of the, of the bark in there. Um, what I am going to do is just rotate this and probably give this like another 15 minutes. And then um, I'm not worried about the internal temp. I just want this bark to set. I want a nice collar on it. So I might, I might go 15, 20 minutes and then... Um, We'll pull this and then end up panning it and some butter brown sugar, then temping that and seem um, basically monitoring that till it hits, well, basically probe tenderness, but I'll probably start monitoring around 195, 200 degrees. So I'm going to get the lid on because I am starting to lose some temperature. And then, and then what we'll do is uh, We'll check it again in 20 minutes, and if it's ready to go in a pan, we'll foil it and put it back on until it's finished. All right, so we're just a little bit over 20 minutes on this. For about an hour, total cook time has been about an hour and 25 minutes. So I've got some apple juice, butter, brown sugar sitting in the bottom of this pan, and we're going to foil it. I'm going to put some more uh, butter and, and brown sugar on top and season it just a little bit more. And then we're going to take a probe and put in the money muscle of this pork butt and just kind of monitor it. I'm going to set it at 195 just so I can then start probing it and checking it for uh, probe tenderness. I'm not worried about the temperature in the middle of the pork butt since what I'm focusing on is the money muscle for the turning box. So when we talk about setting the rub, I can run my hand across this and it does not come off. Now I do like the color of that. I could go a little bit longer if I wanted to and set that just to, you know, more of a darker mahogany. But it's set. I like the way it looks. Hit it just with a little bit more rub. My temperature has gotten up. It, it got about to 350. I have adjusted my vents. I actually closed one, left one halfway open, one all the way open, but now I'm going to wrap it. I opened it because I, I can still go a little bit hotter with this to get it to the tenderness I want. I actually like cooking in these pans on my Weber just because if you've ever had your tin foil get a hole in it, 
making it leak all over the place. Okay, so I'm probably losing some temperature out of there. Okay, so I know my money muscle is right there. I'm just using a dot. Don't want to go too far in. I'm at 116, and that's okay because I've got everything set. I'm not too worried about the temperature of that. Okay, so vents are all wide open. I've got that going. I'm going to get this cleaned up here, and um, we'll monitor the temp now for probe tenderness, and then we'll check it uh, when it's ready. I mean, it may take an hour or two, but... Uh, We'll let that be our guide now, and then um, usually if it was a smaller pork bed, I'd probably let it rest an hour to two hours. This one I may let it rest just a couple hours, so uh, we might do a little video when I pull it. We'll check on it, see what it looks like, and then let it rest.